chapter 14. Time passes. Folks say that when things are going well, mm, let's see, time goes faster. When things are bad, it goes slower. I can see that. But sometimes I think time makes its own decisions about things. I can't tell you how much time has passed here. In the dripping dark, I can't tell you what time has done. Or if it all just happened yesterday, or if it all happened years ago. Or, I don't know, if it hasn't happened yet. I want to tell about Sammy, about Sammy, about when he disappeared. I want to get to that part of the story, but the thing is, we only notice someone is gone when time has passed. It's like the clock is ticking all normal. Then it skips a beat, and we look up, and we didn't actually hear anything happen. But something inside, you know, we see us notice it. Something made us sit up and wonder why. Oh, uh, oh, and wonder. It wasn't quite like that with Sammy. Not exactly. It wasn't a small missing beat. Though for a musical director, that would have made some sense. In a funny way. But this wasn't funny. It say two weeks after I got my tuxedo. <clears throat> After Mr. Drew, let's see, invited me to the party, I was on my way, see, down to my least favorite part of the studio, the music department. When I ran into that strange violinist I met on my first day, let's see, I'd never learned her name. The musicians weren't around much, and anyway, she gave me the willies. She always looked haunted. Her hair was still a sheet of black, and she wore that long black skirt and sweater. Even though, yeah, maybe the weather, no, it was a degree cooler than it was September, but it really wasn't that much better. She didn't stop. I wasn't even sure she noticed me. She, uh, she sidestepped me and kept on going, and that was it. But later in the day, I heard Dave, of all people, talking about how the musicians have been locked out of the music room. What's the big deal? Richie had asked, pushing up a, in a wrinkled sleeve and... Scratching his bicep. Get a master key. They did. Seems like something was barricading the door. Dave replied. We all looked at him. The old man never spoke. Never seems to remember we were here. All I know, he added. And then, like a switch is shut off, he is back to work. Flipping between his two pages. Making sure to change and a drawing to Boris's arm from cell to cell was just right. There must be, mm, let's see, more to that story, Jacob said to me. Something to do with ink. I imagined, but did it say out loud. Because, because that was a bizarre thing for someone to say. Three days after that, when enough time had passed, but not so much that people really noticed it, Toby from accounting mentioned that Sammy had to come for his paycheck. Again, us workers only knew anything about this because Mr. Drew himself was storming around the building, angrily muttering about it, interrogating folks he met as he went. I didn't feel like the rage matched the situation, but then I figured maybe he had something more on his mind than just the missing music director. It's the machine, said Dodds as we were eating lunch. What about it? I asked him. She always just said things out of blue like that. Something's not working right. I heard him yelling at Tom. He's yelling at everyone, I replied. Yes, but trust me, we want answers. We need to find that machine, she said. I couldn't exactly tell her how I wasn't interested in inve <clears throat> investigating any further. How the creature near the inf <clears throat> infirmary didn't make me curious anymore. Just made me want to stay away. After going to the soup shop with Mr. Drew, all I wanted, to, all I wanted was to draw and show Mr. Drew what I could do. I just wanted to work. But then Sammy went missing, officially. He'd been gone for over a week. But when the police showed up and started talking to folks, that's when we realized it was more than just someone taking a day off. The questions were straightforward. When was the last time you saw him? And that's when I remembered that the last time was the time he stormed into the art department looking for ink. That made me very uncomfortable. But then, things took a turn. I remember coming to work and the police were outside and the studio was shut down. I remember being told by Richie that 
certain that someone had broken in and messed the place up. That they were looking into a possible burglary. I remember Mr. Drew rushing from his car and shouting into the detective's face. Hmm, I wish That's something about sabotage. Now, how seeing him shout like that was worse than seeing Mr. Schwartz lose his temper. Then seeing even Sammy lose his temper. It was jarring and a little scary, especially compared to how he usually seemed. I remember finding dots in all the mess. Or maybe she found me. Do you think it's burglary, Bunny? She asked him. Of course not, I said, sounding more sure than I felt. So you'll come with me tonight when everyone's left to check it out. Then she said, she didn't even ask. If she'd asked, I probably, I, I'd have probably have said no. Then again, I still could have told her I didn't want to. She had no power over me. The fact was, despite my concerns, I was still curious. But it was more than that. Seeing Mr. Drew so upset, seeing him shake with rage, locked out of his own studio. Well, it made me want to fix things. And if Dot and I could figure out what had happened. Solve the mystery. He'd appreciate that. I had ambition after all. And Dot had a key. The police barricades were still up that evening. There were no police, though. No one around to guard the studio. Do we really want to do this? I asked him. I could have drawn mm, we see a more mm, mm, we see a, a ominous looking scene if I tried. Which at this point, well, I was beginning to figure my efforts at drawings weren't all that impressive. Still, the dark, gloomy exterior, the do not enter sign. The fact that even the street lamp overhead was dark, a burnt out bulb or something. Dots that didn't really care about atmosphere. In the real world, that is. Ready? She asked him. She slipped easily under the tape, crossing the front door, and had the door unlocked before I even made it across the street, running after her. She was little, but quick. Inside, the studio reminded me a lot of the first time I'd seen it. When there had been that blackout, it made me feel strangely better because it was familiar. But it didn't make me feel all that safe or anything. Dot turned on the flashlight because she'd brought a flashlight. Because she always thought ahead like this. I don't think we should turn any lights on. We don't draw. We don't. We don't want to draw attention to the building, she said as she started walking. And keep away from the windows, okay? Yes, I said. Which wasn't quite the right thing to say, but I was feeling so uneasy now. I knew Dons was confident that Sammy was behind everything. That's strange and creepy. Mm. No, it's the in the studio. And I wanted to trust her. I did with most things, but I couldn't forget breathing on my face. Let's see, the large handprint on my shirt. It didn't make sense to me that any of it was, well, human. It also didn't make sense to me that it wouldn't be either. I didn't want to scare her, though, and I didn't want to scare myself, but I was afraid of what hid in the dark corners. Now, she stepped into the elevator. It was a strange experience, feeling the motion. But seeing only Dodds had part of the ceiling lit, it was hard to believe we were moving at all. Dodds didn't say anything, but looked as determined as ever holding a flashlight just below shoulder height. Her glasses created large shadows around her eyes, framing them so it looked like she was wearing a mask. She was a superhero. The elevator nah, changed, nah, was he clanging to a stop, and we stepped out into the dark hall. Here we go again, I thought. We walked that familiar hallway and thought shone the light around to see more than just where we were going. Buddy, look, she said. Her light had caught the glint of something on the wall. She got closer, but didn't have to. I knew what it was. Ink, she said. She traced it with her flashlight, see down the wall further away from us. The light grew and revealed eh, was see, thick trails of ink, like a hand had been dragged along it, but bigger. There were larger splatters eh, toward the end of the wall, like someone had thrown buckets of ink at it, dumped it on the ground, and splashed it everywhere. No wonder they shut everything down. I don't even know how they eh, start to clean this up. This is someone who's angry, said Dot. 
Do you think Sammy did this? I asked. Who else? She started walking again. I didn't think Sammy did this. I was feeling more sure by the moment. Sammy hadn't had done all this and then just disappeared. Something else had done this and then done something to Sammy. Just as I had, I, I had that thought, I heard it. Now I wonder if it did actually happen that way. Let's see, that I thought it. Hmm. Let's see, it then heard the breeding. Maybe, no, let's see. Maybe I heard the breeding first. That would make more sense. I'm not that clever. At first, I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me, like the ink is slipping down the paper. But then thoughts mm, stopped and said, Shh. And I knew. I knew she heard it too. We stopped walking and stood a complete silence. Except we could have seen in silence. Not with a sound of wet breath but stalking us from somewhere behind. Not with the sudden dump on the ground and another. I noticed when the light of Dot's flashlight was dimming. No, we see. What a moment for the bulb to die. Let's see. Now, I turn to look at Dot's face, illuminated by the glow, staring in horror as the shadow started to creep into the beam. It could have been water pooling around us, but I knew it wasn't. Another thump and another. The breathing got louder and louder. The light got dimmer and dimmer. Run! I whispered loudly. It gave Dot a push. I didn't even want. No, I didn't even see. Think about it. I just did it, and she ran. Didn't ask why. Didn't try to come up with a better plan. She just ran, and I ran. The light. Let see. That was left. No, bouncing off the walls. Making it hard to tell which direction we were going. It glanced off a poster. And suddenly, Bendy was grinning at us like he did. No, let's see. Like he jumped out from behind the corner. I gasped. But the poster was soon behind us. Just then, the breathing that was getting louder and louder. Panting. A large, heavy animal chasing us. And catching up. I barely saw the word music before Dot called out. Over here! We lost ourselves at Zord to the music room and... Now, however, we got inside. However, we got through. We were in. And the door slammed no seat behind us. I learned hard against it. I leaned hard against it, out of breath. Terror flowing from every pore. Mm.